That's amazing how good that looks. No, it really looks awesome. It's cool to see it actually moving around and just that one line to, to make the whole image. I can't believe it's finally working. Technology, engineering, art, mathematics, science. Rapid advances in these disciplines is what has created the amazing world we live in today. Moving forward, we must work together to generate the creativity, innovation, and excitement that will drive us to a better tomorrow. Hi, I'm Ben Peart. I'm a software engineer who spent the better part of the last 30 years working on products like Windows, Xbox, Visual Studio, Git, and many others. During those years, I learned a lot about engineering best practices, and now I want to put that experience to work on Coolmaker projects combining computer science and art. One day, I came across some videos of people like Princess Etch and others who were making art on an Etch-a-Sketch. I was amazed at how they could use such a simple toy to draw such detailed pictures. So I ordered an Etch-a-Sketch from Amazon, and when it arrived, I tried my hand at doing some simple drawings. It became clear very quickly that I am not an artist. I could draw something close to a square, but anything more complex than straight, vertical, or horizontal lines, and I was awful. While I'm clearly not a talented artist, I am a talented engineer, so I decided to use my engineering skills to try and build something that could create Etch-a-Sketch art for me. One of the first steps in engineering a solution to a problem is to outline the requirements for what a good solution would need to have. I came up with a number of requirements, including that it must be simple enough that someone attending an art exhibit could walk up to it, take their picture, and have it generate the art for them completely automatically. Another one was that creating and drawing the picture had to be fast enough that someone would be willing to wait while it drew their picture. With these requirements in hand, I was ready to start researching solutions. One of the first problems I needed to solve was how to remove the background from the picture that was taken. I eventually came up with a solution of using a camera that pairs a regular camera with a depth camera that gives you the distance to each of the pixels in the image. This would allow me to remove all parts of the image that were behind the person whose picture was being taken. I did some searching on the internet to find existing ways people have created single continuous line from a photo and came across TSP art that seemed to be what I wanted to do. I tried a program called StippleGen that will take a picture and convert it to a pattern of small black dots. It also has the ability to draw a line that connects all the dots using a traveling salesman algorithm that sounded exactly like what I was looking for. I tried it out, but while the stippled image looked great, because it uses different sizes of dots to give the perception of shading, a single continuous line connecting those dots just lost all that detail. Next, I found a project called Etch-a-Snap that takes a picture and draws it on an Etch-a-Sketch. This was so close to what I wanted to build, I thought, oh no, somebody's already done it. I looked and they were using edge detection and then just drawing the lines between objects and the pictures. I wrote up a quick test program that uses a canny edge detection algorithm, but the results just weren't what I was looking for. As I kept researching TSP art, I came across several images that looked exactly like what I was looking for. The amount of detail they could show using a single line was amazing, but how were they generating them? I finally found a continuous line drawing example that was just five lines of Mathematica code. The Mathematica results looked really good, exactly what I thought an Etch-a-Sketch drawing should look like. But Mathematica is a large, heavy-duty application that won't run on something simple like a Raspberry Pi. While I couldn't just use Mathematica, I did now have an idea for how to generate an image that looked great. I'd just have to write the code myself to replicate what Mathematica was doing. Writing the code for the image processing steps wasn't bad until I reached color quantize. This is the function that reduces the number of colors in the image from millions to just two. I implemented a version but found it very lacking. The output just looked bad. It was clear that Mathematica was doing something more than just quantizing. After comparing the differing results, it became apparent that they were doing some type of dithering along with the quantizing to get more attractive output. I started looking at various dithering algorithms until I came across Stuckey half-toning. One nice thing about Stuckey is that it didn't need me to do any quantizing at all. I could just use the grayscale image directly. Once I had a nicely dithered black and white image, it was trivial to write a function that created a list of all the points that were black in the dithered image. From there, I just needed to find a way to connect all the points with a line that I could follow with the Etch-a-Sketch. 
Finding a line between all the points in my image is very much like a classic graph theory problem known as the traveling salesman problem. The traveling salesman problem asks the following question. Given a list of cities and the distances between each pair of cities, what's the shortest possible route that visits each city exactly once and returns to the origin city? It is an NP-hard problem, important in theoretical computer science and operations research. What does NP-hard mean? Well, in this case, it means slow. The time to solve a TSP problem can grow exponentially with the number of points, and with the images I was generating, it could take hours or even days to complete. This clearly didn't meet my requirements for being fast enough that you would want to watch your picture being drawn. I had to find a faster way. I reached out to a friend and former coworker who just happens to have his doctorate degree in graph theory. He was able to point me to a colleague who had studied this problem extensively, and importantly, had a library of code named Concord that implemented many different TSP algorithms. To meet my requirements, I didn't need an optimal TSP solution, I just needed one that looked good. This was key as there were a number of algorithms that gave approximate results very quickly. I wrote a quick test application that let me output my results in a format that the Concord library was able to work with. This let me try out different algorithms to see how long they took and how good the results looked. After some experimentation, I learned that while Quick Barufka could produce results in less than a second, it left some weird artifacts with random lines connecting dots that were far from each other. The Lynn Kerninghen algorithm didn't have those artifacts, but could take a minute or more to compute, which is a long time to wait to see if your picture was going to look good. It turned out that a compromise worked out well. Lynn Kerninghen does a Quick Barufka to get a starting path, and then modifies that path to try and further refine it. If it finds a better path, it saves that one and tries again. Since it uses this iterative approach to getting better results, you can just let it run for a while until it's good enough. After trying several different durations, I found that with even five seconds of iterations, it got rid of the odd artifacts and produced a path that looked great. Now that I can connect the dots using a traveling salesman's algorithm, it was time to figure out how to use that list of dots to turn the dials of an Etch-a-Sketch and draw the image. My idea was to attach a stepper motor to each dial and then drive the stepper motor from my program. Stepper motors are very simple. You send an electric pulse and it turns the motor a fixed amount, but this means there's a lot to keep track of in your program. You have to track where the motor is at all times, convert movement commands into numbers of pulses to get the timing just right, speeding up for straight lines and slowing down before you change direction. There's backlash compensation and much more to keep track of. Fortunately, these problems have been solved many times before. I didn't need to invent anything new here. I can just use an existing computer numeric control or CNC controller. There's a common language called G-code that many CNC machines support. All I needed to do was write the code to translate the TSP to a series of G-code commands. I could then use an existing G-code interpreter running on an Arduino connected to the stepper motors to drive the dials on the Etch-a-Sketch. I decided to purchase a commercial pen drawing CNC machine. That way I could test and debug my code to generate G-code independently from the digital Etch-a-Sketch I was going to build. Once it arrived, I was able to hook it up and debug my G-code until it was all working properly. With functional prototypes for all the software steps, I'm now confident I can build a solution that meets the requirements I set out for myself. The next step is to research and prototype all the electronic pieces and figure out how to assemble the physical device. I ordered a faceplate from Pinoco that was laser cut from a 3mm smoked acrylic. This provided a much nicer finish and allowed you to see some of the LEDs on the Raspberry Pi so you could get just a hint of how it was built. When I got the faceplate, I laid it on top of the backboard from the shadow box and then used a pen to mark the location to drill the holes. This made it really easy to ensure that they were lined up perfectly. The touchscreen I ordered came with an acrylic faceplate and back and the necessary spacers and screws to put it all together. I simply replaced the small faceplate and back with ones that would fit into the shadow box. When working with 3D printed parts, I found that the holes end up slightly smaller than the dimensions in the CAD model. I simply drill them out to the proper size or tap them if they're going to get a screw. This makes the assembly much easier as you're not having to force the screws into a hole that's slightly too small. Once all the preparation is complete, it's simply a matter of screwing all the pieces together. I had purchased 6 inch USB panel cables and mounted them into the frame of the shadow box so that the power and USB cables could simply plug into sockets on the frame. This prevented having cables hanging out through holes in the frame and made a much nicer package. 
When I was designing this project, I wanted it to look more like an interactive art piece in a museum than a hacker project. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks awesome. Now that I have my software working with the pen drawing machine, I started having my friends and family try it out when they came over to visit. Everyone loved taking their picture and then watching the CNC machine draw it out. Because it made a physical drawing, everyone wanted to keep that picture and take it home as a souvenir. I quickly realized that being able to take your picture home to show your friends and family was an incredibly valuable addition to the experience. One day, I may go back and build a CNC etch and sketch anyway, but for now, the digital daguerreotype produces a print that you can take home with you.